Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about my eight week BBL update. So I got my BBL on May 22nd, 2023 in Atlanta with Dr. Gray at Me Aesthetics. If you haven't already, go watch my BBL video. I take you along, I think four or five, I think four days um, after surgery so you can see like everything that I went through the pain levels that I was at. So I'm not really going to talk about the first week of surgery. Um, but I don't think I told you guys who my doctor was. I did say that I went to Mia Aesthetics, but I did go to Dr. Gray and I really loved Dr. Gray. He was very sweet. He was very personable. Um, he was just an overall good doctor. He was very realistic when he came in and he did the markings on my body. He told me what he can achieve and what he can't when he, I told him what I wanted. Um, I did start out on the bigger side. I was 185 pounds and I am 5'5". Five five, so I was a little bit bigger. You'll see I showed you um, my stomach literally right in that surgery room, the, the prep room. So I was I was pretty big um, and my results now I feel like he did a pretty good job on getting a lot of it out. But, um, you know, you never get what you go in surgery expecting that you're going to get. But I'm very happy with my results. Um, I remember when he was marking my body and I told him, like, I just want a flat stomach. And I told him to make my butt as big as possible so when I lose some, um, I'll still have a butt because you're supposed to lose 30 to 40% of your BBL. So, um, and I, I remember the one thing that stuck out is I have back rolls. And he told me that back rolls are half skin, half fat. So most likely I'll still have some back rolls, which I still have my back rolls, which I was, I'm not really happy about, but... Um, he did tell me that that's probably going to happen. So he will be honest with you and tell you what you're going to get. I feel like Dr. Gray also does like a more of a natural BBL. Um, I didn't want to look like, like that Vixen look. Like I didn't want people to like stare at me when I go out. So you can definitely tell like I had surgery, like I have a butt now, but I feel like it's still natural like it's very proportioned with my body which I'm very happy about because I have really small skinny legs so I didn't want this crazy butt that just didn't match and I feel like Dr. Gray did a very good job in proportioning my body so thank you Dr. Gray I'm very happy with him and I recommend him to anyone that is going for like a natural BBL look you're still gonna look like you have a BBL and like you have a butt but you're not gonna like break necks which I didn't want to um, okay, so that was my doctor. I went to Dr. Gray in Atlanta, Mia Aesthetics. Um, I liked Mia Aesthetics going into surgery. I feel like after you get your surgery, they don't care about you no more. Um, so I did not like that. Um, I feel like they could have did better with how they took care of their girls after surgery because, you know, that's the most important part. Um, you just had surgery and I feel like they just try to get you in and out because they already have your money. Um, I did get a package with them, which I didn't know if it was optional or not. When I booked my surgery, they just added it on. It was like an extra like $1,500. I don't recommend getting a package. It wasted a lot of my money and I ended up having to call for like, like, almost a month after surgery to try to get a refund um the package i paid for came with a bbl pillow that was hard as a rock and it was horrible i don't use my bbl pillow i use a bobby um it came with five massages a urinal i didn't use the urinal i don't know what was up but every time i try to use it it my i just didn't like it i couldn't pee so I don't use the pillow. I don't use the urinal. It came with lipofoams. Lipofoams are like $20 on Amazon. I don't need that. I have abdominal board. I bought my own, so I didn't need that. Five massages. I got one massage, and then I was on my way to my second massage at like 8 o'clock in the morning, and they canceled my massage as I was on my way in and canceled all the rest of my massages. So I ended up getting a refund and having to find my own massage therapist in Atlanta to come to me and I had to pay an extra $600 out of pocket for that. So I was very upset about that. Um, and then the Fajas, they gave me one stage one. It was like a 3XL and I was 
I needed a new faja after like two or three days because it just wasn't enough compression. Um, and I was supposed to get two stage ones. You don't need two stage ones. You're literally going to be in it for a couple days and two stage two fajas. And I ended up having to go and buy a stage two faja for $200. And that faja was horrible. Um, I wasted my money on that. Um, but yeah, I came out of pocket like a lot. And then for the Fajas, that was three Fajas I paid for that I didn't get from Mia Aesthetics because when I asked for it, they told me that they don't give it on the fifth day because I don't need it until two weeks after, which didn't even make sense because I don't live here. I live in New Jersey. So they said they'll ship it to me, but I had to go buy another Faja. So I had to like basically like call them every day and harass them. Finally, someone emailed me and she tried to just tell me she'll ship me the Fajas. And I was like, no, I already bought two Fajas. Like, I don't need the Fajas no more. Long story short, I had to argue with them to get my money back. I did get my money back, but it took a long time. So if you're going to book with Mia Aesthetic, Mia Aesthetics, don't book a package. Find your own transportation, your own... um place to stay, your own massages, your own fajas, do all that on your own. They're good for the surgery and that's it. Once you get surgery, you don't want to deal with them no more. You can go to your post-op final and that's that. Even, um, I'm going to talk about it a little bit after, but I did run into something that happened to me and I said to the nurse at my post-op final that I asked her what was going on and she just told me it was faja burn and like brushed it off and it was not faja burn. So, me aesthetics is good for the surgery i'm happy with my body but i feel like after that they just didn't care for my post-op final i waited two hours just for her to look at me and tell me i was okay she had they had 30 girls in the waiting room literally we all have bbls we're like standing around we just had surgery imagine standing for two hours like that's crazy and it was one nurse it was just awful so yeah, I, I like me aesthetics. I like Dr. Gray, but after surgery, you need to make sure that you got your own nurse. You got all that like handled. Don't go through them. Don't book a package, book the surgery. That's it. Um, so that's my review on me aesthetics and Dr. Gray. Love Dr. Gray. He was great. Me aesthetics. They get like three and a half stars because they were good up until I was very comfortable up until after surgery. Um, yeah, so that was my experience with me aesthetic. Hey guys, I was editing, um, the video and I realized I never even talked about the cost of my surgery so I'm gonna just talk about the cost real quick please bear with me because I'm literally like holding my phone and my hand is shaking but I'm gonna insert the invoice right over here You'll see, I think I had to pay a $847 deposit to book the surgery and then um, it will show you like the final cost of the surgery plus the package I talked about um, and everything that came in the package. So just remember that you're going to pay for a lot of other stuff more than just the surgery itself. You have to pay for your travel fees. You have to pay for um, like your flight. You have to pay for you getting back and forth to the surgery center. You have to pay for wherever you stay. Um... I did a big Amazon order of all the stuff that I needed for surgery. I went to Walmart and bought a bunch of stuff. Um, I went to the grocery store and I meal prepped before surgery. You have to pay for massages. You have to pay for fajas. You have to pay for faja alterations. So in total, I uh, added everything up and I spent around $13,000 on my surgery. So if you deduct what you see right here and thirteen thousand dollars, that's about how much more you need when booking your surgery around that amount. Um, because there's a lot of other stuff that you have to pay for. So just be aware of that and think of that when you're booking the date so that you know how much you need to come up with before that date. Um, one thing that I did is Mia Aesthetics gives you a portal. I don't know if every doctor does, but they give you a portal. So you have to pay off your surgery 10 days before surgery. So, um, I think I booked it like three months in advance. So every week I would just go put money on my surgery so that it was paid off in full before I even got to Atlanta. So that's one thing that helped me. 
Um, I just paid whatever I had extra that week and it made it seem like not as much. Um, I showed you guys the first five days. I was in a lot of pain. The first five hours was the worst, but I feel like it was only bad for me because my body did not do well with the anesthesia. That was the first time I ever even got anesthesia. So my body just like was fighting it off. It did not last good for me. Um, so when I woke up, I felt everything. And then I had to drive an hour to get my Percocet and the Percocet didn't even work so I feel like everybody's experience is going to be different in that aspect because my friend that got surgery said that she was not in pain after surgery because she was still on anesthesia and her Percocet kicked in so um yeah the first five hours was the worst the first five hours and first five days was the worst um but yeah, if you want to see like in detail how I felt after surgery, go back and watch the BBL vlog. Um, but I want to talk about the flight because a lot of people ask about the actual flight. So my flight was not bad. Um, I decided to have surgery around Memorial Day. So I literally flew home the day before Memorial Day in Atlanta airport, which was horrible because of course it was packed. I waited in line. I had Faha's foams. I was by myself carrying this heavy behind bag. Um, it was just bad. The whole time I was waiting in line, I was telling myself not to pass out. Um, so I think you should definitely get wheelchair assistance if you are traveling home by yourself. Um, you just should not be walking in the airport like a couple days after surgery. It's way too much for your body. I regret not getting wheelchair assistance. I feel like I probably would have been more comfortable. Because literally my eyes was crossing and I felt like I was going to pass out. Um, but once I got through security, I just went and I got a Powerade. I went to the bathroom. I splashed some cold water on my face and I found my gate. I took my BBL pillow and I sat down. Because I was really going to pass out in that airport and I was not trying to miss my flight. I needed to get home. I was over it. But yes, yeah, so um, the flight itself was not bad. I just put my BBL pillow and I sat down on the plane and I put like... um my sweater over my legs so you couldn't even see and it wasn't bad at all it was but my flight was only an hour and a half atlanta to philly is only an hour and a half so your second week post-op your pain is definitely going to subside you don't need to take tylenol any medicine anymore but you're still going to be sore stiff and bruised um the second week is still just very uncomfortable i feel like this this surgery is more uncomfortable than painful after like the first five days you're just going to be very uncomfortable you have all these foams these boards stuffed in your body just it just doesn't feel like your own it just feels foreign your butt is really really hard and heavy um and yeah you're just really sore and stiff like your body is just like it's like you have a have sticks and you just can't bend or, or move how you normally do so the massages, the massages in my case were not painful. If anything, they were actually like, they felt really good because you're really stiff. And I feel like the massages kind of take that stiffness away. And it makes you feel like your body feels normal. Like that was my only sense of normalcy in the whole process is after I got a massage, I would feel like, like, like you just, I don't know, it just feels really good. Like, you can tell that the fluid isn't built up. So that fluid, it just builds up and it, it like hardens. So that's why you feel so stiff in like your stomach and your back because you just have this hard fluid all throughout your torso. So it like just makes you real stiff. So when they like move it around, you feel loose again. If that makes sense, if I explained it good enough. So the massages, it would be like a good pain, like just a good pain like it hurt a little bit but it felt good because it was relieving it was just so relieving so I love the massages um the first massage was of course like a little painful but it was nothing like that I couldn't handle I was always excited for my massages every day I was super excited so I think the first five days I got five or six days I got a massage every single day once I came home I got three massages a week and then once you get to like four weeks, you can go down to like two massages a week and so so on so forth. And a lot of people ask me, since I do have three kids, like what was worth a uh, BBL or childbirth? In my case, I couldn't, like they were like the same but different. Because childbirth is obviously, it's a whole different part of your body. So the pain is different. But a BBL is just at the same pain level. It's just a different part of your body. For me, I think the 
BBL might be a little bit worse because it's a constant pain. Like you never get that relief. Childbirth, you get contractions. So when you're done with that contraction, you get a little bit of a break and then your contraction comes back and then you get a break again. And the only time you don't get a break is when you're pushing, but you don't push for that long. The BBL, you get, you're in constant agony. <laughs> like there's no relief. Um, and then you have to sleep. Liposuction is the worst part. Your butt is not going to hurt that bad. But the liposuction is the worst part. And then they put this board on you and you're supposed to sleep with it pressing into your stomach. It's really painful. So I, I can't really say which one is worse because birth in children is crazy. And every child is different. So, But they're at the same level for me. They were both excruciating to me. At least the first day of a BBL was excruciating. It was really painful. Um, but it was worth it. Like, I would do it again for, like, what I have. I would definitely do it again. Like, it hurts. Don't don't be fooled. It hurts really bad. But it's worth the result. Like, it, it's really worth it. I'm so happy with my body now. I'm so confident. It, it was worth every bit of pain. In that moment, you could have told me that, though. I was like, why the did I do this? This is awful. Going into week three, week three, the soreness kind of subsides and now you're just stiff. Um, but it's like, it keeps getting better and it's getting better and you're starting to feel a little bit normal. Your body still doesn't feel like your own, but you're not as sore. So, um, and by week four, the soreness and stiffness kind of like goes away. Like it's still a little bit there, but you're starting to feel more like yourself. And then after that, once you get to week five, it's like, you're kind of like back to normal. Um. So like week six, seven, and eight, I really, honestly, I stopped counting. The only reason I know how many weeks I am is because I have a friend that had surgery a week before me. So I know like she knows what she is. So I'm just a week behind her. But yeah, after week four, it's kind of like, oh, okay. Like I got surgery a month ago, but you're kind of like over it. You still have to get your massages and the faha. So let's talk about the faha because the faha, the foams and the boards are all going to be the vein of your existence. Like it's awful. So you're going to be in a faha 24 seven. You could have an hour off for three months, but it's not the faha. That's the problem. You have to wear foams and boards every day every minute and it's annoying you look big as hell you don't look like you got no surgery you look like you're probably about your back and your stomach is pregnant you look huge and it's really uncomfortable um and it's just not fun like you always have to be in your foams and the boards now i can say that it snatches you like your foams and your boards wear them even though they're ugly and they're uncomfortable they're gonna make your stomach flat I don't have my foams and my boards on right now because I just got my faha altered. So let's talk about that. So I came home. I got a stage two. Well, no, I got my first stage two in Atlanta. It was the worst faha ever. Cut up my vagina. Okay. They don't tell you about that. These fahas, be careful. If they have a zipper, if they have, I don't even know. Cause that one had a flap, but it wasn't like when you try it on, Please pay attention to how it makes your vagina feel. If you feel like there's any pressure or it's like riding too high, don't get that faha. You should put it on and feel nothing. Like the faha I have on right now, I feel nothing down there. And this is the best faha I've ever got. But the one I got in Atlanta, literally, I came home and it it was in so much pain. And the ride home, I'm like, yo, this is cutting my vagina. Like it hurts so bad. I got home and it literally cut my vagina. Like I t went in the shower and my vagina started burning because it was cut. So I cut the faha. Vagina, no, that hurt because now it, I don't wear that faha. I spent $200 on that faha and I could just throw it in the trash because I can't wear it. It hurts so bad. Like it hurts so bad and it only hurts my vagina. So please be careful when buying fahas. Pay attention when you're putting it on. It should not hurt your vagina. Um, don't get the one with the zipper, get the one with the flap, but just when you're trying it on, pay attention to the vagina part. So I bought the, that stage two. I never got that faha altered because it was crap. So I think a week later, I stayed in that faha for probably about a week and then it got too loose. And then I went and I bought another faha. I got this faha in Philly. It's called Latin Fashion and it's the Hourglass Faha. It is amazing. 
it's no compression on your butt or your hips it literally is so lightweight you don't feel like you're wearing anything um because some of these fajas are really really thick and you feel them when you have them on you see them through clothes this one is so thin it's so lightweight but it snatches you I'm literally going to go buy the same faja and just go keep getting it altered. So I've got this faja altered two times. I get it taken in four inches, two inches on each side. Um, and then I get it pulled down on my legs. She alters it. I told her my lower belly is one of my problem areas. So she pulls it down to flatten my bottom stomach. Um, so I just got it altered. And when you get it altered... Be prepared to be in pain for about three days after you get it altered because it, it's literally going to feel like someone is taking a knife to your sides and it hurts so bad. Um, I don't wear my foams and boards for probably about two to three days after because it just is so tight. Like it's, I, it's so tight. I broke three of the buttons trying to put this on. Like it's so tight that I lay on my bed and Malik like has to like use all his force to um close it so now i can't fit any foams and boards in so for like two to three days you're not going to be able to breathe but you will shrink so the first day i got it altered i did fit my foams in but it was like so painful i i just went to sleep it was so painful and it woke me up out of my sleep i had to take it off and put a waist train on but the one night i slept no was it that? Did I sleep? No, I took it out, off at like 6 o'clock in the morning. But I slept most of the night with it. When I measured myself, the night before I was a 33. That morning I was a 31. You dropped 2 inches overnight. So the pain is worth it, right? So, so when I came out of surgery, my waist was a 37. Right now I'm a 31. My goal is a 29. So, but I'm only on the first hook of this one. So by the time I get to the fourth hook, girl, I, probably, I might be a 28. So yeah, just keep getting your faja altered. Get it, take it in. Your waist will keep getting smaller and smaller. But the faja, the foams, the boards, girl, if you're not going to keep up with aftercare, don't get a BBL. Because when I came out of surgery, I was fat. And the only reason I'm getting smaller is because I keep going to get my faja. I get my faja altered every two weeks. And I get it taken in. I don't know if I'm going to get it altered again because I don't want my waist to get, like, super small. But it's still, like, wide. Like, I need to keep getting it altered. So, I might get it altered one more time and then that's it. Um, but, girl, you need to find a nice seamstress and get your faja altered and wear your foams and boards if you want to be snatched. Let's talk about the BBL pillow versus the bobby. So, I'm going to get both. Hold on. But... This is the BBL pillow. I got it from Mia Aesthetics. This came in my package. So I came home and I went straight back to work. So I needed something to sit on. So at first, I sat on the BBL pillow just like this. It goes under your thighs. And your butt should be up in the air like this. Okay, so there's no pressure on your butt. And I probably use this for about a week. It makes a lot of noise. That was annoying while doing clients, and honestly, it's really uncomfortable. But if you want no pressure on your butt, this pillow is good, but your thighs will start to hurt. So that's the BBL pillow. The thing that I like about the BBL pillow is it's a lot more compact. So when you're going out to eat or anywhere, you can carry it around better, put it in your bag. This is the boppy. Now don't judge my boppy. It has made it through three kids. So it looks a little worn and torn. And it's just a lot more comfortable. Your butt is going to go in the hole. Now I can say there is going to be more pressure on your butt. With the BBL pillow, your butt barely touches. With this, your butt is going to touch, but it's going to take a lot of pressure off. But it's just a lot more comfortable. It feels like you're actually just sitting down. Um, now, I stopped using the BBL pillow probably two weeks post-op. 
and I would carry this around with me but I'm someone who doesn't really like care about people judging them or what people think so for me using the boppy wasn't a problem and carrying it around wasn't a problem for me but if you care what people think and you're wondering if people are looking at you I'd probably use the BBL pillow because it's a little bit in terms of comfortability the boppy is definitely like way better for me it's better for laying down if you want to get your eyelashes done after surgery I would use the boppy and not the BBL pillow. I just really don't like that BBL pillow. Laying down after surgery. You're supposed to lay on your stomach. Um, You're supposed to lay on your stomach for three months. I don't do that. I probably did that up until week four. And then I started taking pillows. And I would put two pillows underneath my head. Take those big fluffy couch pillows. And I'll put two under my back. I'll leave a space between my butt. And then put one underneath my legs. And that's how I'll sleep. I'll sleep on my side like that, my back, my other side, and then switch to my stomach. Um, and for me, I don't think it altered my results. I think my butt is still pretty big. Um, so it just helped me, like, my quality of life a little bit. Because, like, no joke, laying on your stomach for three months is really depressing. Like, this surgery can really make you get depressed really quickly. And I just wasn't going for that. Like, my mental health is more important. So if it means my hip got to go down a little bit. It will go down. And I know when you don't have surgery, you're like, girl, it's not that serious. Like, just lay on your stomach. But you don't, you didn't have to wear foams and boards and a faha literally all day, every day, and only sleep on your stomach and kneel. And you can't sit down on your couch and you can't watch TV. And you're laying, like, you haven't been through that. So until you go through that, don't talk to me about it. But. I worked around it and put pillows around me to make sure I'm still not putting pressure on my butt and my hips. So if you're going through it right now and you just need like some relief to like feel like you're sitting down or laying down and watching TV on your couch like a normal person, try the pillow trick. Two pillows behind your head, two under your back, and one under your legs to lift your butt up. One last thing I'm going to talk about because I got five minutes before my client gets here is... um. I did end up getting an infection after surgery, so a lot of people don't talk about like what could really happen. Um, so I had a blister on my butt, and everybody told me it was faha burn, um, and I guess the blister popped, and from washing my faha so much and putting it on, I guess bacteria got into the blister after it popped. The skin turned black. I'm going to insert like pictures and stuff. The skin turned black, and... I didn't really think nothing of it. My one butt cheek was like way bigger than the other one and my hip too. And um, I started thinking like something was wrong. It was hot, like my butt was hot and then my leg kept going numb. So that was really terrifying. I ended up taking myself to the hospital and I was in the hospital for four hours that night. I think I was in the hospital until like 3 a.m. So more than four hours, yeah. I went at 8 and I got out at 3 a.m. Um... They ran all types of, they took blood work, ran all types of tests. They um, did a CAT scan. And and they were just scared that the infection had traveled into my blood because you can get sepsis and you can actually die. Um, or that there was an abscess. So luckily in my case, I found it quick enough that none, none of that happened to me. Everything was fine. They put me on clindamycin, which is an antibiotic that cleared up the infection and the swelling went down. The numbness in my leg went away. Everything is good now, but that was really terrifying. But thank God I turned out to be okay, but it is a, like something that could come with surgery. Infection co can be a side effect of surgery so when you're doing this just make sure you mentally prepare yourself for everything because if anything the surgery is way more mental than physical um you get a lot of judgment a lot of backlash i still don't regret my, my decision that infection was really scary for me but i'm happy i turned out okay um it was called cellulitis too i got cellulitis after surgery but yeah, everything turned out to be okay. I'm going to go ahead and insert some pictures of my body in a video of what my body looks like right now at 8 weeks. If you guys have any questions, go ahead and comment below. I will be doing a 12-week update, but I hope I touched on everything. Um, 
I, I didn't really know what to talk about. So if you guys have any more questions, go ahead and comment below. But I'm going to go ahead and close this video out and let you guys just see what my body is currently looking like because that's why you're all that's why you're here, right? All right, guys. Thanks for watching.